NHL Classic Series, showcasing the greatest Stanley Cup playoff series ever played. The pass, Sockett, scores! The greatest Stanley Cup finals on Classic Series, all week on the NHL Network. This is the NHL Network. And from the Hartford Whalers, representing all of hockey with great distinction for five decades, number nine. Time. Pittsburgh, 1991, Stanley Cup chance. Well, gets it back center. They score. Gretzky scores. The waiting is over. The New York Rangers are the Stanley Cup champions. Let the celebration begin. Welcome to the NHL Network's presentation of the top 20 games of all time. I'm Dan Pollard. Well, with tens of thousands of games to choose from, the challenge of narrowing the league's best games ever was left to the NHL, who donated the 20 for display at the Museum of Radio and Television in New York. Today, we show you one of the games from that exclusive list. Some games are famous for a play on a moment, but this game evokes memory simply by saying the words New Year's Eve, December 31st, 1975. Arguably, the best two teams in the world faced off at the Forum in one of the most memorable games ever played in that very storied building. Porta, le numero un, wearing number one, Nikolai Adonin. Le numéro 2, number 2, Alexander Roussev. Le numéro 3, number 3, Vladimir Luchenko. Le numéro 4, number 4, Viktor Kurskin. Le numéro 5, number 5, Valery Vassiliev. Le numéro 6, number 6, Gennady Tsigankov. Le numéro 7, number 7, la capitaine, the captain, Boris Mihailov. Le numéro 8, number 8, Alexander Maltsev. Le numéro 9, number 9, Alexander Volkov. Le numéro 10, number 10, Victor Kutergin. Le numéro 11, number 11, Boris Alexandrov. Le numéro 13, number 13, Alexei Volchenkov. Le numéro 14, number 14, Vladimir Papov. Le numéro 15, number 15, Vyacheslav Saladukin. Le numéro 16, number 16, Vladimir Petrov. Le numéro 18, number 18, Vladimir Vikulov.
Le numéro 21, number 21, Sergei Vlasov. Le numéro 22, number 22, Victor Schlottoff. Le numéro 17, number 17, Valery Karlamov. Le numéro 20, number 20, Vladislav Tretiak. Now, introducing the Montreal Canadiens of the National Hockey League. Emetta. Nos Canadiens. Le numéro 1, number 1, Michel Larocque. Le numéro 29, number 29, Ken Dryden. Number three, John Van Boxmeer. Le numéro cinq, number five, Guy Lapointe. Le numéro dix-huit, number eighteen, Serge Savard. Le numéro 19, number 19, Larry Robinson. Le numéro 24, number 24, Don Ory. Le numéro 26, number 26, Pierre Bouchard. Le numéro 6, number 6, Jim Roberts. Le numéro 8, number 8, Doug Reisbrough. Le numéro 10, number 10, Guy Lafleur. Numéro 11, number 11, Yvon Lambert. Le numéro 14, number 14, Mario Tremblay. Le numéro 17, number 17, Murray Wilson. Le numéro 20, number 20, Peter Mahavlich. Le numéro 21, number 21, Doug Jarvis.
Ready middle vendor number 22, Steve Shutt. Ready middle ventura number 23, Bob Ganey. Ready middle vent sank number 25, Jacques Lemaire. Ready middle dues number 12, the captain, Yvan Cournoyer. Two captains have been called to center ice. Cornway is there, and now Mikhailov makes his way as the head of the Soviet Sports Federation joins Clarence Campbell in this, the official face-off prior to tonight's big New Year's Eve hockey game here in Montreal. And there it is. Oh, come on, Ivan. Campbell wants one more. Amazing to hear the reception given, especially to the last two Soviet players introduced, Karlamov and Kretjak. So the official part of that ceremony is over. Danny, they're going to have the exchange of gifts. These Soviet players must have pretty large phones because every time you see them play hockey, they're exchanging gifts with somebody, either before or after the game. I think there seems to be, and we're thankful for it, a great spirit of camaraderie here between these teams, starting the game at least. We don't know what'll happen after. But I haven't heard this crowd in such a frame of mind as they were tonight. Uh, I suppose comparably would be Labor Day 1972. There you see the gifts that are being exchanged. The Canadians receiving the gift on the left, the Montreal players are offering each Russian player a silver single one of the third series of Olympic stamp sculpture. Our coverage of Super Series 76 Game 2 continues in just a moment. My name is Jess Gessner. I lost 115 pounds with Bowflex. I was 25 years old. I was 310 pounds. I had a 44-inch waist. Looking back at how big I was then, it's hard to believe that I look good as I feel I look now. If you want great results like Chess, then call for a free video or DVD from Bowflex. And now, through this special offer, you can own the new Bowflex Extreme with no money down and payments of just $18 a month. It's empowering. You feel great. You just, like, I can conquer the world because this machine just makes you feel that good and makes you that strong. The Bowflex Extreme is backed by a seven-year warranty and comes with a six-week, 100% satisfaction guarantee. I know other guys who ate sandwiches and lost a lot of weight, but I don't see them on TV with their shirt off. Call us now or visit us online for your free DVD or video. Find out how to get your Bowflex Extreme for just $18 a month. Call now. The Coors Light Brewing Company salutes the buddy. I have told a ridiculous lie to back up a friend's ridiculous lie. I have slept outside. Because a friend put a sock on the doorknob. I have never hooked up with a friend's sister. More than once. I have been a friend by being with my friends. Girlfriends. Friend. The Coors Light Brewing Company is proud of all the brothers from different mothers and the easy drinking taste of the ice cold silver bullet. reach for a cloth when you've got Bounty. Just one sheet handles everyday spills and doesn't stop there. When wet, unlike this other regular towel, Bounty works on tough messes like caramel and keeps working till the whole job's done. The Quilted Quaker Picker Rubber Bounty. Here, there you're going to look at the free warm-up activities of Dryden. He's down there in the north end. And well, in the south end, Kretschak. Kretschak played all eight games for the Soviets in the series involving the National Hockey League in 1972. Ken Dryden played in four of those games, splitting the duties to even Stephen with Sony Esposito. So the starting lineup is out on the ice now for the Soviets. Petrov will go to center. 
Palamov, who had that great goal in New York on Sunday night, number 17, is over on the left wing. Mikhailov, number seven, he's the captain on right wing for the Soviets. Gusev on defense. And the other defenseman will be Vasiliev. There you see Petrov. Now for the Canadians, Lafleur at center. Amy on the left wing, Wilson on the right side. Savard and Lapointe on defense, and it goes to the Canadians. Savard clearing it ahead to Ganey, and he ran into Vasiliev and went down. Huck is into the Soviet zone. Vasiliev cleared it up on the left wing. Palamov passes it, and it's off the stick of Savard. Palamov coming in. Mikhailov takes his shot, and he's wide with it along the ice. Now Ganey with Wilson. And Kretziak was there to make the save. Now Wilson is bumping there along the bars with Mikhailov. And the save. The Canadians getting a penalty. John, right off the bat, we saw two things that we saw in New York the other night. A good check by Vasilyev and one of those long Soviet passes which preceded the breakaway by Murray Wilson. Well, Mikhailov moved in close to, and a shot on Dryden, but that was a great check by Vasilyev right at the blue line, right to start the game. Now here's Mikhailov. He plays it on a stick, and uh, Murray Wilson ends up with a penalty. Penalty number 17, Murray Wilson. Two minutes for high sticking at 38 seconds. 38 seconds, the time of the high sticking penalty against Wilson of Montreal. Petrov at center, Mikhailov on the right wing, Karlamov over there too, he remains out, Vasiliev and Gusev. So in effect, there is no change for the Soviets on the power play. For Montreal, Ganey, Chervis, Savard, and Lapointe. No score, we have just started here, we're in the first minute of play. Now Lapointe gets it over to Ganey. Ganey back into his own zone to Savard. He takes a look, clears it ahead of Jarvis. Vasiliev, back in his own zone to Harlamov. Harlamov starting out over the line with Petrov. Petrov has it at the line, playing it back. And the Soviets are stymied the first time they put their power play into operation. Now Gusev up on the left side. Mikhailov over the line, a great move. He's knocked to the ice. Here's Petrov trying to clear it in front. He's knocked down. Now the puck goes to Lapointe. Lapointe slaps it off the boards and the Soviets back into their own zone. Shluktov comes off the Soviet bench. Vikulov is out there too. Now Alexandrov is on the ice and he cleared it into the Canadian zone. There's the bird with it. To the point and the gets by Sibylia. Now on the left side. Lemire cleared it down the ice. Vasiliev from in front of his net. Shluktov missed it. Now it goes to Robinson. He ran into Roberts. Lemire has it and it's called on the outside. 31 seconds left in the penalty. Hey, is doing all right, John. They had said before, while they didn't want to draw any penalties, they had to block up the middle, and that's what they did inside their own line, at least up to now, anyway. Well, they didn't. They kept control of the puck, too, with Ganey throwing it back to Savard. And Savard's pretty wise when he's coming up penalty. It's 31 seconds left in the penalty. Shluktov, Vikulov, and Alexandrov up front. The gang cop is on defense with the Luchenko, who has the puck ahead. It goes into the center ice area to Vikulov, to Alexandria. He passed it back, and it's broken up by Roberts. Roberts shooting it down the ice, but now he has exactly seven seconds left in the penalty to Wilson. Now the Soviets again. Shluktov has it on the right side. He goes one way, the puck the other, and the Canadians again shoot it down the ice. And it is icing against Montreal. From the Forum in Montreal, Super Series 76. Thanks, Dad. 
your little girl. Not so little anymore. Are you ready for this? Now you can be. See your State Farm agent and plan your financial future with the company you trust. We live where you live. Bye, Dad. repeats the same wintry ritual. Well, he's not the only one. Join the NHL Network for Groundhog Sundays. Each week, we'll turn back the clock and give you the roundup of the week that was one year ago. Let's take a look back. Groundhog Sundays, only on the NHL Network. No groundhogs were harmed in the making of this promo. 31 days of great TV will be over January 31st. Keep the great TV coming. Subscribe to any or all of your favorite channels and enjoy great movies, comedies, music, sports, documentaries, international channels, and much, much more. 31 days of great TV can be just the start of great entertainment all year round. To keep enjoying your favorite channels, call your television service provider today. Back of the Soviet bench, you have three coaches. That's one of the assistants, Dinyan Alexandrov, who for many years was a star player for the Soviet national team. Soviets, everybody up for the face-off. Zoladukin is at center. Malsev and Popov are the wings. Kornwaye, Mahavich, and Shut. Volchenkov on defense, cleared it away from Shut out to center. Now Ori to Robinson, he cleared it through center. It's gobbled up by Kuzkin, he is shot. Shot with Cornway, Mahavi, shot, shoot, goal! <laughs> John, the Canadians took advantage of something you don't see too often, I would imagine. The Russians coughing up the puck. Here's the replay. Watch Steve Shutt release this puck. Now, this is a great shot right in the top corner, and Trechak was partially screened. Just a super shot. Here it is in a replay again. I'm wondering if Trechak might have been looking from the shoot to the long side, to the stick side. He caught the short side up high. Tremendous emotion. And the forum, and at 316, there you have it, Steve Shutt scores. So it's one nothing. But one nothing lead sometimes don't mean very much. The Rangers found that out. Well, the Rangers took that penalty and let the Soviets back in the game in New York. Number 22, Steve Schutt. Assist to number 20, Pete Mahovlich. At 3 minutes, 16 seconds. So at 3.16, it's uh, shut from Mahovlich. Fred Jack's a busy goaltender. He played all but four of his team's games in the part of the schedule they completed prior to this trip. There is the head coach, Konstantin Loktev, and there is the other assistant coach, Anatoly Pirza. So a booming blast from the stick of Steve Schutt and Montreal leading the Soviets one to nothing. It is Petrov at center against Lemaire. Ganey has it, clearing it in. Tretziak gives it to Gusev. The mayor after Gusev, the big, tall, husky Soviet defenseman, feeds it ahead. Harlamov digging in there, fires the wrist shot, and he's wide with it. He's a tremendously exciting player, number 17, Harlamov. Vasiliev playing it out. Mikhailov gets it over to Harlamov. He left it there, and it's swept away by the mayor. Petrov back at the line, losing it to Lafleur. Lafleur trying to center it, going after it again. Here's Lafleur, the pass too high. Lemaire rolled it in front of the net, and Gusev cleared it up. Harlamov bumped by Ganey. Here's Lafleur centering it right in front of the net, and it was grabbed up by Petrov. And the Soviets are having difficulty getting out. Vasiliev cleared it to center. 
Now Petrov turning back at his own line over on this wing. Harlamov missed it. Gaining nitrogen over the line. There's Lafleur going to the corner. He's centered it. And there to get it is Gusev. The guard stopping it. The point rolling it ahead to Gainey. He hops it over the line. Here's Gainey with Lafleur right in front of the net. Lafleur the And a penalty coming up. Penalty coming up. Dick, what I've noticed about the Soviets, they've slipped the four, extra forward up near the blue line for a quick breakaway pass, so they've been trying to get that puck up to that forward. Luchenko from the face-off, shooting it down into the Canadian zone. Montreal leading the Soviets one to nothing with just 4.58 having been played. There's Tournoye in a full plate of steam down in behind the net. He's trying to center it. Peter Mahavlis goes in there to help. Here's Cornwallier getting ready to start. Knocked off the stick. Van Bosch here winds up with a shot. And that changed direction and went off the boards behind the net. The gang cop clearing it out. Now it's got tied up. Peter Mahavlis comes in there to assist. Mahavlis. Clearing it on the left side to LaPointe in over the Soviet line, a weak shot. The gang cop checking this point, and it was cleared from in front of the net. Shluktov ahead of goes to Vikulov over there. Shluktov, he tried to get it back in front, and it was stopped out of point. Here come the Canadians, Cornwallier faking the shot, and it's stopped by Sagankov. Shluktov taking it over on the far side at center. Laying it back into his own zone. Luchenko turning. Now there are 37 seconds left in the penalty. The Soviets, they have that fine defensive pattern going. Mikhailov now has it. Rise brows on the ice. Volchenkov comes to center. Knocked off his stick and Tavar takes over at the Montreal line. Ahead to Lambert, Reisbrow couldn't pick it up. That's Petrov for the Soviets, dumping it back in. Volchenkov, Mikhailov, laid it to the boards, now it's in over the line. And Petrov is in there with only three seconds now left in the penalty. Mikhailov coming out over the line. Vasiliev is back on the ice, good moves there by Mikhailov. And he got it over on the side to Petrov. He cleared it ahead. Savard for Montreal. Over to Robinson. He chopped it to center. Gusev couldn't clear it out. In there goes Harmelov. Here's Conley getting ready for the net. Conley in the shot. And it's stopped by Kretziak. Outstanding work there by Conley of Montreal. Savard broke up Petrov. Lambert over to Reisbrow, he shoots at the rebound in front of the net. They score! Lambert! work by the whole line, starting really when Romley came close, but it was a tremendous job of work, Fergie. Well, when Reisbrough shot, he, he, Petriak made the first save, and persistence paid off, and Lambert backhands it between his legs. Better he look just... at it here, I think. Uh, better angle right here from in front of the net. Sit down, please. There. Thank you. <laughs> there it is through his legs, and Lambert gives him a 2 nothing lead. The Soviets have not had a shot on Dryden. The Canadians have outshot them 7 to nothing to this point in the hockey game. They're playing a fired-up hockey club here in the Montreal Canadiens. There's no doubt about it. Close-up look at Trechak, John, right here, and you see Lambert, number 11, with the backhand, and as John pointed out, persistence, he fought off the check and scored. This is to number 8, Doug Reisbra, and number 18, Serge Savard, at 7 minutes and 25 seconds. 7 minutes and 25 seconds, the time of the second Montreal goal. Popoff clearing it back to the line. Jarvis coming down on the left side, and Kuzkin broke him up. Here's Savard into the center ice area with Roberts and Wilson. Savard lugging the puck on the backhand, and he fired it around the net. Canadians Wilson trying to keep it in. Kuzkin missed it. 
Volchenko takes it in behind the net, trying to shake off Wilson. Gets it over the stick of Popov, and it's Savard with it. Here's Savard, shaking off Popov. Savard into the center ice area to Wilson. And Kuzkin cleared it back to the line. The Canadians feed it in. Now at the line, here's Jarvis going in. He shoots it. And Kretziak got in front of it. Volchenko clears it down the ice, icing against the Soviets. This is Super Series 76 from the Forum in Montreal. Get ready for a whole new kind of Dodge. Introducing the all-new Magnum. First, you see stunning performance. Another look reveals surprising versatility. Open it up and you'll find a tri-fold cargo floor. Bold styling that features a unique access lift gate. Even a powerful Boston acoustic CD sound system, which makes the all-new Dodge Magnum a whole different ride. Hit it! Velocity meets versatility. The new Magnum starting at $27,995, only at your Dodge retailer. The Expedia.ca Escape Winter Sale. Right now, escape to Florida, Mexico, Las Vegas, the Caribbean, and Hawaii. The Escape Winter Sale. Book before January 31st. Expedia.ca. Now we're getting somewhere. 31 days of great TV will be over January 31st. Keep the great TV coming. Subscribe to any or all of your favorite channels and enjoy great movies, comedies, music, sports, documentaries, international channels, and much, much more. 31 Days of Great TV can be just the start of great entertainment all year round. To keep enjoying your favorite channels, call your television service provider today. NHL Classic Series, showcasing the greatest Stanley Cup playoff series ever played. The pass, Sakic, scores! Join us nightly for an action-packed hour featuring the game's fiercest rivalries. The greatest Stanley Cup finals on Classic Series, all week on the NHL Network. Here you see the shots on goal. The Canadians have now had eight, the Soviets have not had one, and the face-off department is six to one in favor of Montreal. From the face-off, it's cleared down the ice. The Gangkov shooting it down. The shot got away from Vikulov, cleared it for Kornbaye, breaking it on the right side. And Luchenko swept it off to the wing. Now here's Robinson winding up for the shot. He swept it down the net, and Kornbaye fired it. He fired it wide. Kornbaye with a backhand shot. And on off the stick over the glass. Great chance for Cornway. A pretty good play by Luchenko in the first instance because Cornway had him beaten prior to this, moving in. Back of the net, look at it. The Havlich going in along the boards against the Gankov. Cornway passed it back off the boards to Don Ory. There's a shot to the short side. Cornway digging at it behind the net. Against Luchenko, Kornwaye prevails to Peter Mahavli. Now the Soviets breaking out over the line. Alexandra down on the right side. He's upended. Canadians take over. And it is shot, clearing it down the ice. Luchenko going back for the Soviets. The Canadians are called for icing. John, I would have to think that the Soviets are a little perturbed. They looked at the shots on goal and see it now 9-0. Don Ory hasn't scored a goal all season. The NHL came close and then made a good defensive play here. Here's a Boris uh, Alexandrov, and of course Donnie's a real defensive defenseman. Gets that puck up, and they haven't had a shot yet, is right, Dick. Gusev getting it over. Vasiliev knocked it to the corner. The point gets it out on the left side. Lemaire with the first. The mayor going in, shoots, and a hot shot is juggled by Tretiak. Here come the Soviet, Petrov. The Harlamov, he's over the line. Here's Harlamov trying to work in there. There's the shot, the rebound. Mikhailov took the shot, tried to center it. Off to Bard's stick. Mikhailov, Mikhailov carrying it to the left side. 
And it's LeFleur in possession for Montreal. Gives it to Lemaire, who dumps it delicately into the Soviet zone. Now Vasiliev, beating it ahead. Petrov couldn't get it. And LaPointe with 9 minutes and 46 seconds left in the first period. LaPointe goes up on the left wing. Vasiliev to Mikhailov. He's down on the right side, over the line. Harlamov stopped. Harlamov to the Mikhailov. To the side of the net, he took that shot and couldn't get it on the target. That was late passing there by that Russian line. That's a Hyloff, Karlamov, and Petrov. A Hyloff back in on the right side. Petrov working his way in, trying to slide it in front. There's Gusev winding up for a shot. And it went off to Bird. It's centered in front of the net, and LaPointe clears it. Jarvis getting it out over the line. Soviets showing their best offensive pressure of the hockey game to this point. Montreal leading two to nothing. Soledukin is on the ice now behind the net. They try to center it. Mihailov had his centering pass blocked. The point rolled it into the center ice area. Vasiliev had his pass get by the bird into the Canadian zone. The point gets it for Robinson, and it goes down the ice. And the checking, something you don't see too often in games, of this nature, the checking a bit close. Balchenkov and Wilson went sprawling on the ice. Now Jarvis coming in over the line. Here's Jarvis working to the corner. He's getting set for a pass. It hit Vasiliev. There's Roberts with it. Over for Wilson, and he couldn't pick it up. Vasiliev cleared it to the other side. Here's Popov out on the right side. Maltsev is across the line, getting into the slot. He fired it. And it was low and wide. Wilson starting out down on the left side. Pushkin is back there for the Soviets. Canadians are changing while the play goes on. Solidukin dropping it neatly back to Malsev. Good stick handling by Malsev. Coming up with Solidukin. And Robinson cleared it out over the line. Huck was bouncing crazily. Solidukin. Ahead uh, for Papa. And the Canadians very strong at their own blue line with the forwards coming back, as you see there, with Reisbrock coming back. Solidukin was bumped by Ori. Seven minutes and 18 seconds. Left in this, the first period. Montreal leading two to nothing. The Soviets. Solidukin clearing it right back into the Canadian zone. Shluktov, number 22, is now on the ice with Alexandrov. Lambert going in, broken up. The Gangkov clearing it to the Canadian slide. Ori finally got it over to Risebrow. Risebrow to Don Ori. Ori at center on the left wing. Shoots it in there. Trombley is bumped along the board by Volchenko. He and Volchenko fight for it. Pass to the Hobley. And he had that one go off the heel of his stick. The Gangkov in on the board. Against Trombley, are they going to get a whistle? Yes, they do, in the face-off in the Soviet zone. And he's got to be happy at this stage. Two to nothing. Cornwallier shooting it right now. And Tretziak got that that pad out there to make the save. Here's Shluktov over the line, and he fired it. He didn't miss by much on that far side. Peter Mahovlich against Alexandra. Vikulov is the other forward for the Soviets. LaPointe tried to set up his man shot, and it's down the ice. And Lutsenko touches it, icing against Montreal. Soviets with the defense of the Gangkov, playing up along with Lutsenko. Here's shot he has scored in this game tonight. He's belted out the line by Lutsenko. Now Vikulov into the center ice area, hitting the Montreal line, trying to get by Bouchard. Emma Hoblich cleared it to the line. It's brought in by Sakankov, and that's offside. Game three of Super Series 76 is coming to you from the Forum in Montreal. When you have diabetes, test anywhere, anytime with a fully integrated AccuCheck Compact. Monitor and test strips are all in one. When it comes to blood glucose monitors, AccuCheck Compact can't be beat. Put it to the test today. Ask your pharmacist.
lot into the Nissan Murano. And as it turns out, so can you. NHL Classic Series, showcasing the greatest Stanley Cup playoff series ever played. The pass, Sakic, scores! The greatest Stanley Cup finals on Classic Series, all week on the NHL Network. February on the NHL Network, NHL Classic Series, showcasing the game's greatest playoff matchups of all time. Live NCAA action featuring the best U.S. college rivalries. Top 10, a countdown of the game's best goals, penalty shots, playoff performances, and more. 20 greatest games, showcasing the finest games in NHL history. And exciting action from the East Coast Hockey League. Join us in February on the NHL Network. Every year, the groundhog repeats the same wintry ritual. Well, he's not the only one. Join the NHL Network for Groundhog Sundays. Each week, we'll turn back the clock and give you the roundup of the week that was one year ago. Let's take a look back. Groundhog Sundays, only on the NHL Network. No groundhogs were harmed in the making of this promo. Well, they'll face off outside the line. The Lafleur to the point. The point slapping it off the boards, racing after it out to the left side to Lemaire. He cleared it into the Soviet zone. Gusev in there against Lafleur. Gusev from the corner. Montreal leading two to nothing. A pass. Harlamov has it on the right side. He's over the line. Takes the shot. A quick wrist shot. And Dryden had to kick it out very neatly. That wrist shot is very dangerous. Now Petrov coming back in. Try to set up. Harlamov and Savard broke it up. Vasiliev back at the Soviet line. Now Petrov going after it. Swings the pass up to Gusev. Gusev closing in for the shot. And it goes off Savard over the glass. Savard seems to be everywhere when he's out there. At 16.33 here in this first period with his team leading 2-0, Ivan Cornwallier draws a hooking penalty. So, Danny, a chance for the Soviets as the period draws to a close. And it'll be Petrov, Mikhailov, Harlamov, Gusev, and Vasiliev. Canadians clearing it down the ice, and they are defending with Jarvis and Ganey up front with Severd on defense with Lapointe. Now the Soviets. Harlamov grabbed it at center, darting in on that left side. He dropped it back. Gusev slapping it into the corner for Harlamov, but Severd is there, plays it to Jarvis. And Jarvis starts out against Petrov. They fight for possession on the boards. Savard comes up with it. He hits the Soviet line, takes the shot. It's a weak one off Gusev's stick. Now Ganey trying to keep it in there. Mikhailov from the corner, turning with Harlamov and Petra. Gusev moves up in the play, and he's stopped by Jarvis. Here's Jarvis down with Ganey. Jarvis decides to kill off valuable seconds on that penalty. From center, he knifes it back into the Soviet zone. A minute left in the penalty to Cornwallier. Now Lemaire during the four checking. Vasiliev. He stopped by Lemaire. And Lemaire cleared it out to center. Petrov is bumped by Roberts. Harlamov is stopped by Lemaire. And the Canadian doing a magnificent job of killing off this penalty to Cornwallier. Now Gusev sends it ahead. Petrov at center. Alexandra is up in the play. Alexandra getting it back. Vasilia takes a shot and it goes off the mare into the center ice area. Mikhailov to Alexandra on the right side. He starts in on the wing and it's offside with Gusev in there over the line. 16 seconds remaining in the penalty to Fernway A. And the Canadians have had a good shift right here of penalty killing from both Doug Jarvis, who then left the ice and was replaced by Jacques Lemaire. And if you watch the Montreal Canadiens very much, you don't see this too often, Jacques Lemaire sprawling to block a shot. But he certainly did there, and they are doing a lot of things here tonight. I guess they might not normally do, because as Danny has pointed out, the Canadians are very much fired up. Well, Hobley just trying to shoot it down the ice. We have exactly eight seconds left in the penalty to Cornwallier. Uh, Vikulov, 18, is turning. 
Alexandrov, number 11, has it. He feeds it ahead. The penalty has expired. The puck into the Canadian zone. And it is icing called against the Soviet. Two to nothing. Montreal leading the Soviet. This is a second power play opportunity for the Soviet team. Vladimir Mikulov and his teammates, and they had not got a shot on goal in either one of their opportunities. The fellow's been on and off with the national team, Mikulov. He scored twice against the Rangers on Sunday. There's the clock situation. 122 left. Canadians lead by two. In the faceoff, Cornway to Don Ory. Here is Robinson winding up. The shot is right on, but Fretziak had it taped all the way. Here's Don Ory taking a shot. Mahalvey fired it. And he was wide. Corn Y.A. Corn Y.A. along the board. He's jostling there with Luchenko. Now it's back to the line. Don Ory keeping it in. The gang top and Corn Y.A. fight for it. Corn Y.A. has it. Schluck top along the board gives it to Vikulov. He fires the block back to Luchenko. Now, Vikulov was stopped. Zagankov working from the corner. Shluktov feeds it to Vikulov, cutting in on that right side, rammed in on the board by Don Ory. Mahavli slated to the corner. Alexandrov fell in the corner. Wilson missed the pass at center. Luchenko rolled it ahead. It was almost blocked by Lafleur, let's see an interference penalty coming up here against Shluktov, is it? There's somebody over in that area. And let's see, the penalty will be assessed finally. And someone will go over there. Did you get that, Dick? I think it is number 22, Shluktov. He hasn't uh, been told yet that in the National League, I guess you've got to go directly to the box these days. He went over the players bench now he has returned there it is at the top of your screen interfering with the Canadian player Bob Ganey so with 15 seconds left in the first period and the Soviets draw a penalty a Le Maire Lefleur shot the point and severe that's the power play alignment for Canadians with just a dozen seconds left they go with two defensemen here's Lefleur Lafleur working the corner, he left the pass quickly. There's a shot by shot. And it went off a stick over the glass in that corner area to the right of Fretziak. Three seconds left. That was almost pretty good play. Uh, Shep worked hard to get in position with Lafleur with the puck watching. Time for a face-off and maybe one shot. With two seconds left a few years ago, Mahavli scores from the face-off, the only goal of the game against Toronto. Doesn't happen very often. Lemaire gets the shot, but it's wide, and that's going to be the end of the period with Montreal leading the Soviet 2 to nothing. And the Canadians drawing a semi-standing ovation from the happy crowd here tonight. The shots on goal favored the Canadians. Montreal is shooting the Soviets by a margin of 11 to 4. NHL Classic Series, showcasing the game's greatest playoff matchups of all time. Live NCAA action featuring the best U.S. college rivalries. Top 10, a countdown of the game's best goals, penalty shots, playoff performances, and more. 20 greatest games, showcasing the finest games in NHL history. And exciting action from the East Coast Hockey League. Join us in February on the NHL Network. Join the NHL Network as we present the Top 10. Scores! This game is tied! Mario Lemieux makes it 2 to nothing. A half-hour show featuring the Top 10 goals, saves, playoff performances, and much more. Oh, what a pass! And boom, it's in! The Top 10, 
nightly at 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific, on the NHL Network. Every year, the groundhog repeats the same wintry ritual. Well, he's not the only one. Join the NHL Network for Groundhog Sundays. Each week, we'll turn back the clock and give you the roundup of the week that was one year ago. Let's take a look back. Groundhog Sundays, only on the NHL Network. No groundhogs were harmed in the making of this promo. And I would think the crowd here tonight very, very close to 19,000. We'll have the official paid attendance prior to the start of the third period. Now the second period. About to get underway, and the penalty killers for the Soviets will be Petrov, number 16, Mikhailov, number 7. And the front three for Montreal, Lambert on the left side, Lemaire at center, Lafleur on the right wing, Savard and Lapointe on the point. Gusev and Vasiliev are on the blue line for the Soviets. Now Lapointe hits the Soviets' line, working into the corner, putting on the brakes, trying to get it back to Lambert. It's loose in there for a fraction of a second. Vasiliev and Lapointe fight for it. Lafleur is chasing it to the far side. Savard drops back to the point, back into the corner to Lemaire. Lemaire for Lafleur. Petrov is after him. Lafleur falls. Now behind the net, Vasiliev. He gets an opening, clears it out. Mikhailov over to Petrov. Lemaire wheeling back for Montreal. Lemaire over the line. His shot is blocked by Vasiliev. Gusev has it with 55 seconds left in the penalty to Shlukta. Canadians back into their own zone. Two to nothing, Montreal leading on goals by Shutt and Lambert. Here's the bird. Four-man attack for Montreal, and it's offside with Lambert going in too quickly on the left wing. Well, there is number six, Gennady Chukinkov, 28 years of age. This is his sixth year with the Central Red Army team, and of course, this is the team that supplies the majority of the players to the Soviet National Club. Ten of them in uniform tonight were up against uh, Harry and John's Team Canada 72 team. Solid Dukin, number 15, uh, Vikulov, 18, on for the Soviets. Here's shot winding up, and a cannonading shot right on. Back to Van Bok, very shot a hard one. Here's the point taking a shot. Three big saves there from the firepower of the Canadians. And that Van Boxmere has come up with a tremendous shot, and he's very accurate. Here is Van Boxmere coming down ahead to Cornwallier, bursting into the right side, beats it in front, and shot was covered by Sagankov. Here's the hop, he's getting ready for the net. He pokes away at it. Tretiak is down. It's loose in front. Shot getting it back to the point. Slutkov is back on, gets it over to Vikulov. Vikulov over the line, takes the shot. The point blocked it. Shot goes to the ice along with Vikulov. Now the Soviets, Popov, chasing it to the side. He's bodied by Lambert. Reisbrock coming in on the left side. He centered it. Solidukin clearing it on the right side. It's Balsev hitting the Montreal line, gathering speed. Balsev around the net from the corner. Balsev jammed into the boards by Bouchard, who falls. Balsev doing great work for the Soviets. He pulled over finally by Reisbra. Great work there by number eight, Balsev. Now Savard on the right side. Solidukin after him. Popov goes after Trombley. Volchenkov working to the line, losing it to Lambert. Players go sprawling all over the ice at the Canadians' line. Lambert is shooting it in over the line, and the Canadians make changes while the play goes on. Now the Soviets broken up at center by Wilson. Wilson coming in with Roberts. He shoots it right on. Here's Wilson shooting it. The light went on. He hit the goal post. He hit the goal post. The light went on, but he hit the goal post. The goal judge was a little trigger happy there. Robinson faking the shot. Jarvis shoots it to the short side. 
Now they jam in on the boards in behind Tretiak. Well, Murray Wilson got it that backhand away quick. Here's a save by Tretiak, and here's Murray coming up off the top post and yeah. did not go yeah. in the net. Yeah. Face off to the right of Tretiak. We are now a dozen seconds away from the fourth minute mark into the second period. Kyloff takes the shot! It's gone! Mick Kyloff fired it, Dryden got a piece of it, and it went in. That was a quick wrist shot, Dick. And only the first shot they've had on goal in this period. Only about the second time all night, John, that I can recall that they threw one of those long passes up and it worked. Well, here's Mikhailov getting that quick wrist shot away, and I thought Dryden had a piece of it, and he did. Yep. And it dropped in across the line. Two to one. Red Army goals, court by number seven. Boris Mikhailov, assist to number five, Valery Vasiliev. At 3 minutes and 54 seconds. 3.54. Karlamov coming in and he's spun around by LaBear. Back is back at center. Mikhailov getting the goal. Vasiliev the assist. Here's LaBear coming in over the line. And the Red Army team right back into the thick of things. It's 2-1 to one for Montreal. Mikhailov a drop pass to Petrov. Back to Mikhailov. Petrov centering it. And it went off Dryden. The point ahead to left for Ganey is on the left side. Here's Ganey going in. He finally picks it up, works off the board. Into Lafleur. Lafleur getting set back to the point. He waited too long. He was checked to Mahovlich, couldn't get it in front. Now it's tipped ahead by Harlamov. Mikhailov going in, driving out of the net, and Savard comes up with it. Savard's pass hit Petrov's stick. Now then Lafleur. Four checking is Harlamov for the Soviets. So is Mikhailov. Now Mahavlich with that big reach comes out. He cleared it ahead. And Gusev knocked it back to center. A neat move by Mahavlich. Mahavlich coming up with a, a Russian maneuver there, putting the puck between his skates. Here's Shluktov. Shluktov. Down at center on the right wing in over the Montreal line. The big fellow tried to center it off Ori stick. Four and YA bump by Alexandrov. Gusev failed to hold it in. Emma Hovley chasing it to the far side. Alexandrov turning at the Soviet line. Back in over the Canadian line. Here's Gusev firing it. And it went off Four and YA. Lambert laying it out over the line. Chasing it to the far side. Finally, Gusev got it. Hit Alexandrov. Two to one, Montreal leading in the second period. Lambert couldn't hold the pass. Zagankov to Lechenko, and he missed Shluktov. Don Ori ahead for Risebrow. Now Alexandrov missed a pass. The checking so close right here, both teams failing to find the target on the passes. Ori to Lambert ahead to Risebrow. He failed to negotiate contact. Now, Nikulov, he's got there by Rysdorff. Rysdorff coming in, Tromley and Lambert moving up. Here's Lambert, and that one hit Nikulov. That pass hit Nikulov, he seemed to get it on the side of the face. Now Popov speeds to center, in over the Montreal line. It's swept off his stick by Lapointe. Lapointe rolling it ahead into the center ice area. The Red Army team making changes, a dire dearth of whistles here in the second period. Kuzkin dropping it back to Maltzev. He starts in on the right side. It's cleared back to the line. Here's Popov. Putting it on to the side the net is Kolodukin, and he fired it wide. Robinson trying to clear it. And finally, Lapointe goes in there to take over for the Canadians. Ahead to Jarvis. Jarvis down to the line. Solidukin, I think, is going to get the penalty for tripping. This is Super Series 76 from the Forum in Montreal. Hey, little fella, gotta change your touch. What you thought was enough? 
might be too much. See, it's more cushiony than ever before. With Charmin Ultra, less is more. When we say less is more, Woo! less is more. It's more absorbent than the regular kitten brand for sure. What you used to love, now you're gonna adore. Charmin Ultra, less is more. Cha cha cha, Charmin. Murano. And as it turns out, so can you. February on the NHL Network, NHL Classic Series, showcasing the game's greatest playoff matchups of all time. Live NCAA action featuring the best U.S. college rivalries. Top 10, a countdown of the game's best goals, penalty shots, playoff performances, and more. 20 greatest games, showcasing the finest games in NHL history. And exciting action from the East Coast Hockey League. Join us in February on the NHL Network. Join the NHL Network as we present the Top 10. half-hour show featuring the top 10 goals, saves, playoff performances, and much more. Oh, what a pass! And boom, it's in! The Top 10, nightly at 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific, on the NHL Network. There's a good chance here now for Canadians to get right back and take over the play again. Lafleur, shot. Mahovlich to the point and Van Boxmeer on the power play for the Canadians. He'll give you the Soviets defending lineup in just a second. Now then Mahovlich sent it right in! And the first block it wide from the side of the net. Oh, what a that chip. was a beautiful set out. Great play, Kirk, by Pete. You know, Dick, in the pregame warm-up, he was stopping all his shots on the co low corner of the net with his goal pad. Most goaltenders stop them with their sticks. There was a good example. He got that goal pad across and give it all that more strength behind the stop. Now Lafleur to Van Boxveer to Peter Mahavali to Lafleur right in front of the net and shot. He was in there pretty close. He couldn't get it up. And right there to block it, Tretziak. Canadians throwing the puck around very well, and uh, the Soviets, John, that, they're standing still a little bit out here on this penalty killing role, which surprises me. They're making a change now. Well, they went into a complete two man defense, two man offense here, that four man box. The Canadians penetrated very good there, and, and they were unfortunate not to score. Lafleur gets it up in the top corner. Gusev is on defense with Luchenko for the Soviets. Back to Lapointe, there's the shot, and it's blocked. Soviets breaking out. Petrov over the line. And LaPointe and Van Boxmeer got back. Here's Mahovlich with Lafleur in over the line. Mahovlich near the corner. On the boards. He's upended. And there's a penalty coming up to Gusev. Gusev going off with a minute and 15 seconds left in Solidukin's penalty. What's a two-hander first? Now it takes his feet from underneath them. Here's Lafleur over to the point, closing in for the shot. So Gankov got it. He starts out over the line. Soviets are two players short here. Here's the master, Mikhailov. Gets it back to the line. Luchenko lost it. Now Lafleur. 52 seconds left in Solidukin penalty. Cornwallier coming in. He centered it. Peter Mahal is trying to get it in front. They fight for possession. Mikhailov comes up with it for the Soviets. Brings it out to center. He falls. Lafleur coming back. Hits the Soviet line. Cutting it on the right side. And it's swept away by Tretziak. Zygankov cleared it down the ice. Riding ahead to Lapointe. Lapointe up on the left side to Mahavlich. Here's Mahavlich getting set the back pass. Lapointe over to Lafleur. Closing in for the shot. Luchenko got in front of it. Here's Cornwallier, two Canadians in front, and it bounces off a stick to the corner. 
Petrov against Lemaire. Here's Cornoyer to the third. He rips the shot just wide. Hakush in front of the net. Cornoyer scores! Another wrist shot, Dick, and he really fired it. Got Lafleur's rebound and high on Kretschak. And the papers coming down here in the form, Dick. Tremendous atmosphere. Here's here. a shot by Lafleur. Over the top of the glass. Now watch Cornway. He's so sharp in front of that net. Here's the wrist shot up high. And Kretschak, of course, was down on his, on his knees and no chance at all. Close up look at it here. You get a good look here at the wrist shot that Cornway takes as he swings around and just lets it go. The goal came just as the penalized player who was off first came on the ice. So that wipes out the other penalty, too. This is to number 10. Well, there was no question that uh, second penalty was definitely deserved by Gusev. He gave him a two-hander. And then he took his feet from underneath. It. And like you said, Dick, he made a reaction toward the referee. It's the first time in two games that they have reacted to a penalty call against him. Montreal three, the Red Army one. Now here's Papa breaking in on the left side over to Balsev, and he couldn't get a good shot away against Boucher. I think Savard is getting a penalty for hooking as he followed in on the original puck carrier Papa on the play. So quickly after the Canadians make it three to one, they will be playing a man short as Savard goes to the penalty box. Canadian's penalty number 18, Serge Savard, two minutes for hooking at nine minutes and 52 seconds. Vasiliev is in over the line, Alexandrov is out there too. Here's Ganey coming down with service off Ganey's stick. Vasiliev to Vikulov, he cuts through center, weaves his way to the Canadian's line, loses it. And it's cleared out by Jarvis. We have Vikula, Shluktov, Alexandrov, Zagankov, and Vasiliev. That's the power play for the Soviets. Robinson in behind the net. Robinson gets it and shoots it down the ice, and now we have a minute and 20 seconds left in the penalty. Zagankov. To Shluktov, he comes down to the Canadian line, gives it to Vikulov, back to Vasiliev. He shoots it right in front of the net, and Ori got in front of it, clearing it ahead for Ganey. Ganey falls, Shluktov to Alexandrov, he loses it at the line, and Jarvis clears it down. The Soviets have been unable to get on track on the power play tonight. The tenacity of the checking of the Canadians has been a thing of beauty. Vasiliev cleared it in front. And now it's the mayor. Ahead to Robinson, in on the left side. Robinson into Soviet's territory. Sagankov in on the boards, takes over. He's bumped and knocked to the ice by Lemaire. Vasiliev, rink wide pass. Mikhailov is on the ice now, and it's cleared over the glass by the Canadian Lemaire. They are 18 seconds short of the completion of this penalty. It's the third penalty the Canadians have drawn in the game, and so far on Soviet power plays, the Army team has not managed a shot on goal. They had just one shot in this period. The Canadians have outshot them 9-1, to one, but the one shot was the goal for the Soviet team that made it a two-to-one hockey game, and then Cornway up it to 3-1. Savard in the box, 18 seconds left. It is Petrov, 16 at center. Karlamov, who has the puck now, he's on the left wing. Mikhailov, who takes the pass at center, is on the other side, now he's going through center. Gives it to Gusev, he breaks the stick on it, a weak shot. Karlamov trying to center it, and Dryden is there to get a face off. This is an important face-off, Dick, with one second left to go, and this is what Canadians have really, have really taken over, over the Soviets has been the face-offs tonight, and also the Rangers did, too. And this could be a weak part of the Soviet game is the center 
Ice face-offs. In the first period, there were 20 face-offs. The Canadians won 14. They didn't win that one. Now it's back to Vasiliev. He tried to set up Harlamov in front. He missed it. The penalty has expired. And Roberts comes down to the line, broken up by Gusev. Petrov working his way to the Canadian's line. Mikhailov, a weak shot. Harlamov is covered on the far wing, and it is Savard for Montreal just dumping it in over the line. And they do that when they want to make changes. And that's what Montreal is doing. Here's Lafleur stealing the puck. Lafleur is in the Soviet zone. Nifty work along the boards by Lafleur. Now he tries to center it. And it's picked up by Gusev. Mikhailov dashes down through center ice. In over the line with Petra, broken up by Wilson. Jarvis rolls it over the line. Harlamov on the right side. Here's Petra back to Harlamov. Mikhailov takes a shot. Harlamov around the net. He centered it in front of Vasiliev, a shot. And a big save by Dryden. And it's cleared by Lafleur. The Soviet buzzing around, and finally Wilson shoots it down the ice. That's going to be icy. Game three of Super Series 76 is coming to you from the Forum in Montreal. One days of great TV will be over January 31st. Keep the great TV coming. Subscribe to any or all of your favorite channels and enjoy great movies, comedies, music, sports, documentaries, international channels, and much, much more. 31 days of great TV can be just the start of great entertainment all year round. To keep enjoying your favorite channels, call your television service provider today. NHL Classic Series, showcasing the greatest Stanley Cup playoff series ever played. The pass, Sackick, scores! The greatest Stanley Cup finals on Classic Series, all week on the NHL Network. Every year, the groundhog repeats the same wintry ritual. Well, he's not the only one. Join the NHL Network for Groundhog Sundays. Each week, we'll turn back the clock and give you the roundup of the week that was one year ago. Let's take a look back. Groundhog Sundays, only on the NHL Network. No groundhogs were harmed in the making of this promo. Join the NHL Network as we present the Top Ten. half-hour show featuring the top 10 goals, saves, playoff performances, and much more. Oh, what a pass! And boom, it's in! The Top 10, nightly at 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific, on the NHL Network. Sometimes when a goaltender's not too busy, John, it's not a very good thing for him. Uh, <laughs> Kenny makes a good save here off Petrov. He makes a good save. You know, despite the fact that they've only had six shots on, uh, on Kenny Gride tonight, they're a threat every time they have the puck. Face off to the left of Dryden. Solid Dukin played it back. Shot has it. Headmans it, but it's intercepted by Kuzkin. Over to Popov. In over the Canadian zone, getting into the slot position. And his shot went off Savard stick. Cornway fired it to an open right wing. Volchenkov, number 13, he's on defense now, along with Kuzkin. Here's Maltsev. Some feel to think he's perhaps the most dangerous of all the Soviet players, number eight, but that time they couldn't get anywhere. Here's Kornoye shooting it, and he just grazed the goal post. That was diligent work by Kornoye that made that shot possible. He's at it again. Now the Soviets start out. Saladukin comes to center to the line, works in on the left side. Here's Saladukin around the net, centered it right in front, and it was gobbled up by Mahavli. Mahavli works his way, weaving down to the Soviet line. Now he puts on the brake. Mahavli still with it, pass went off a leg. Saladukin laying it around the net. Here's Cornoyer getting in first with the stop, and Tretziak was ready for him. Volchenkov. 
clearing it out. Malsev turning at the Soviet line. In over the Canadian two line, the shot. Dryden making the save on the short side. Canadians are leading here. A three to one. And we have just over five minutes left in the second period. Luchenko laying it back to Kuzkin. He fanned on an attempted pass. Shukov is on the ice. Now Trombley comes in. He's bumped by Luchenko. Kuzkin got away from Risebrow. Canadians making changes. Alexandrov on the right side. Left the back, went the other way. John Ory was trying to set him up. He didn't want it. Now Robinson is in over the line. Lambert couldn't get it. With Vikulov coming down over the line. Shluktov is in there too. Now on the board. Lambert gives it to Robinson ahead to Tremblay. Tremblay at the Red Army line. Fakes the shot around the net. Trying to center it. He carries on to the corner. Bumping there along the board gently. With a trickle. Face off outside the Red Army line. And the point to Savard. Savard chops the shot into the corner. Gusev with Lemaire after him. It hit Wilson. Gusev barges along the boards. Where is it, they say, and it's back on the stick of Gusev. He gives it to Petrov. Petrov forced back into his own zone. Here's Gusev. Canadians doing four checking of a tremendous magnitude right here. They have the three forwards up and their defense up near the line. Now they fall back. Petrov is starting out. Petrov is coming down to the Canadian line. He's in over the line. Cut him off. He scores. Beautiful setup. And Arlovov with that backhand shot gets a beautifully executed goal by the Soviets. And again, it's on the table, Dick. A three and two Montreal. He makes the big play, John, and he makes it again. Yeah, here's Petrov now. He's a great stick handler. Number 16. Now watch him slide this puck through to Hylamov. And goes right in between Lemaire and Guy Lapointe and the backhands are right into the far corner. This is a super goal again. It's like the one he got in New York the other night. Well, a few times the Canadian defense has sort of moved over and been a little too close together. They were both on that one side. Seven shots for the Soviets, two goals, three two Montreal. Red Army goals, court one number 17, Valery Karlamov, assist number 16, Vladimir Petrov, and number 7, Boris Mikhailov, at 16 minutes, 21 seconds. Here's Mikhailov coming back in over on this side, two seconds, green shot, and it went high off the glass. That goal, Karlamov, later as Ganey races in there back to the point it comes kept in by Savard here's Lafleur trying to center it Gustav Gotti in front of it Petrov out to Harlemov over on the other side Mikhailov has dropped to Petrov he centered it and the point was there he sends Lafleur through center fading to the right side Lafleur being watched by Gustav it's centered and it's cleared now through the crease inadvertently by the Soviets. Vasiliev ahead to Petra. Robinson takes over. He darts in on the left side, puts on the brakes, getting set for a pass maybe. He still has it. Now he gets it out in front of the shot. He fired it. And it went off the stick of Petra over the glass. Here you see the shots on goal, 21 to 7. For Montreal, so there's a maximum productivity as far as the Soviet team is concerned. Two out of seven. They don't do much better than that. And that last one was a beaut. Now Mahab is getting into Cornoyer, getting ready for the other shot. And a splendid save by Tretziak. And what a play by Cornoyer. Pop off over the line, tied up by Don Ori. Peter Mahavlich's pass goes off a leg. It's stopped, brought in by Stella Dukin. Could be a delayed whistle, but the Canadians start out. Montreal leading here with less than two minutes to go in the second period. It is three to two. Here's Malsev running into Robinson, and he stops. Well, Kinkoff lost to Cornoyer. And Cornoyer showing that dedication of speed that made him such a star for so many years in the NHL. Now Papa coming down on the line, trying to barge in there, and he's sandwiched by Mahovlich and Ori. 
into the corner. The Soviet center it and Popov slapped one on that pass from mouth seven. It was wide. Now Canadians roll it into the center ice area. Solidukin turns, hits the line. He's trying to go through there. Goes to the left wing. Malsev's pass stopped by Lemaire. Ahead to Ganey. One rush and back. Now Ganey over the line. Sivankov covering. Now Ganey getting set for the shot. He didn't pass it. He shot it. And it was low and wide. Now there are 53 seconds left. And this is the second period out in front of Tom's off and Kretschak covers up. Then you're talking about the seven shots and two goals. Only two members of the Soviet team have had shots. Mikhailov has had four, and Harlamov has had three. They have been the goal scorers. Berg, uh, Conway in close again. He sure was. Now watch this. The pad of his go right down, and this is what I said earlier, that gets that pad right down on the plate. Sagankov turning from the corner. He's being watched closely by Lemaire, feeds it on the other side, and Vikulov couldn't get it. And LaPointe to Sever. Just a half minute left now in the second period as the Soviets go back there. Luchenko bearing it through center. They're playing it rather carefully here in the final half minute of the second period. Now the Soviets start back. Alexandrov is in over the line, trying to set up Vikulov. And it's Lefeur coming out slowly. Half dozen seconds, Lefeur fires it in. And Luchenko has it, and that's going to be the second period with Montreal leading the Soviets a 3-2 to two at the end of two. Here I am, 50 years old, and I'm um, out in a bikini, and that makes me feel very good. How can a 50-year-old grandmother look this good? Simple. She strength trains with Bowflex. I'm 50 years old, and I have a Bowflex body. Call the number on your screen now to get a free video or DVD that shows you how you can get great results with Bowflex. My results are very real. I lost 17 pounds in the first five weeks on my Bowflex. I'm leaner, I'm happier, I'm sexier than I've ever been. All it takes for great results is one simple workout done 20 minutes a day, three days a week. It's safe, it's reliable, and I can get a good workout from head to toe. Own your very own Bowflex Extreme for no money down and payments of just $18 a month. No matter what your age, if you want real results, you need a real Bowflex. Call us for a free DVD or video or visit us online today. 31 days of great TV will be over January 31st. Keep the great TV coming. Subscribe to any or all of your favorite channels and enjoy great movies, comedies, music, sports, documentaries, international channels, and much, much more. 31 days of great TV can be just the start of great entertainment all year round. To keep enjoying your favorite channels, call your television service provider today. NHL Classic Series, showcasing the greatest Stanley Cup playoff series ever played. The pass, Sakic, scores! Join us nightly for an action-packed hour featuring the game's fiercest rivalries. The greatest Stanley Cup finals on Classic Series, all week on the NHL Network. And so, two hours and 54 minutes away from 1976 in Montreal, we start the third period, one goal separating the team. Gusev chased back by Ganey, now he turns, starts in the center area. Hooked away by Lemaire to Lafleur. Here's Lafleur sending it to Ganey, he fired it just wide. Ganey bursting in on the left side. Petrov cleared it out over the line, Lemaire coming back quickly up and it. Vasiliev is going off, I think it'll be he. Boy. Tripping one of the defensemen. Canadians scored one power play goal tonight. It was Cornway's goal with two men off in the second period. Mahovlich, Lafleur, Lambert, Van Box, Mir, and Lapointe on the power play. Lambert has it on the boards around the Soviets' net. Lambert to Lafleur. 
Here's LaFleur getting set for a pass. Van Box here winds up. He shoots it. And a big leg save. Now there's a shot that hit right in front. And a shot by LaFleur. That went off Pretziak. They jam it on the board. And the face off in the Soviet zone. This has got to be a pretty big moment for the Canadians, uh, Chats. And once again, the story right here, Fergus Tretiak. Lambert got his stick on it, and Tretiak saved it. Now watch this other shot come through. Now watch LaFleur Le fire one. <laughs> Super golf ending. A minute and 36 seconds left in the penalty to Vasiliad. Scotty Bowman making a change. Savard is on. Lemire is on. Now Lafleur goes to the corner. Back near the point. Lafleur right in front of Lemire. He tried to slide it through to Lambert and it went by Lambert. Back to Savard. There's the shot. Lafleur trying to get a shot cleared by Gusev. Canadians keeping it in. Here's Lafleur winding up for the shot. Lemire shoots it and it's blocked by Kretziak. Another shot. By Tretiak. Boy, what else can you say about Tretiak, the goaltender? The Canadians have just been all over them on this power play. They've had great chances, but they have not scored. Lemire had a shot. Lafleur had a shot. Here's Lambert, a typical position in front of that net. Now watch the puck go back here. Lambert gets it up. Now watch this save. That drop at center. The Gusev in possession, fired it off the boards, not out. Savard working it into the corner. Savard around the net. Here's Savard trying to center it off Gusev's stick, and Luchenko cleared it down the ice. There are now 47 seconds left in Vasiliev penalty as the Canadians organized, led by Lapointe. Ahead to Mahavich with Kurmoye shot and Savard in over the line. Mahavich fired it to the far side. And he didn't miss by much. Here's Savard keeping it in, the shot. Kretziak had no trouble with that, and he covers up. Well, another of those individual type moves by Pete Mahovlich, and he let that one go on the stick handle. Top corner was his target, didn't miss by very much. There's the man of the hour right here in this hockey game. The Canadians have had four shots on goal during this power play. The goal's gonna loom very big here, Dick. The Canadians have really played Sparkling hockey, especially in a power play. Gusev behind the net. He flicked it to the far side. Petrov ahead to Lushenko. He's coming down in over the Canadian line. And he fired it from the sharp angle. Just 13 seconds left in the penalty. And the point gets by Mikhailov. Beats it ahead to Ganey. He steps in over the Soviet line. There's the shot. And that changed direction and went over the top of the net. The mayor in for the third. The penalty now has been served by Vasiliev. He takes the pass out to center. Vasiliev over to Gusev. He's turning back. It goes to center. Mikhailov has it down on the right wing. Trying to barge through there and he couldn't get by Ganey. Montreal three. The Soviets two. Third period. Maltsev tipped it into the center ice area. There's the bird who has played an indefatigable game for the Canadians tonight. He's been on the move all the time. Intercepted by Maltsev is the first. Now grabbed off by Wilson Paul on the outside. Scores only 3-2. Kaladuchin cleared it and then Risebrow fired it into the corner. Soviet starting out, Volchenkov cleared it to center. John Ory waits and he ripped his shot back in there. Kaladuchin, he fell, Tremblay missed it. Popov knocked it out, Robinson starts back. Canadian strategy here, they're clearing it in. A shot by Robinson from the sharp angle. Now Robinson gets it in ahead to Lambert on the backhand. He shoots it on the clock on the short side by Tretiak. Tonight's game is coming to you from the Forum in Montreal. Hey, Jack. How do you make a half-blind dovetail? Well, I'd start with a thick drawer front, then rip a fat quarter-inch slab off, then plane both sides of the piece. And Jack. 
Ever stud your meat? Because guys have other things they'd rather think about than cooking, there's Campbell's Chunky Chicken Noodle Soup. Studded with big chunks of seasoned chicken, made with pasta and vegetables, built with nine grams of protein. Campbell's Chunky, fully constructed. Hey, Lagoli, don't forget, 10 o'clock, game of the ring. No, I've never had so much fun. I can't remember when I've ever had so much fun. Where did you get that feather? Hmm, our trip. We load up our new Nissan Pathfinder and head out. Make camp, can't make camp. Get a better idea, get lost, get found, jump in the lake. Jump out of the lake. We keep driving, watch four movies, come across this family and give them a ride. Well, the father's a Navajo Healy man and soon we're around this fire and they give us this hawk feather. We drive home without touching the freeway and get back just as we run out of CDs. Broccoli? The new seven passenger, 270 horsepower Nissan Pathfinder. 31 days of great TV will be over January 31st. Keep the great TV coming. Subscribe to any or all of your favorite channels and enjoy great movies, comedies, music, sports, documentaries, international channels, and much, much more. 31 days of great TV can be just the start of great entertainment all year round. To keep enjoying your favorite channels, call your television service provider today. Face off to the left of Fletchak, Jarvis against Schluchtoff, Robinson tipped it in, Luchenko from the corner failed to clear and Roberts whipped the shot into Fletchak, now Wilson shoots it and it's blocked, Sagankov coming out, ahead to Schluchtoff, Schluchtoff over the line, there's the pass, Alexandria, he scores, Alexandra! And it is tied at three. Fergie, these fellas are just amazing. That was a two-on-one break with Don Ory trapped on the play. You just don't give them a chance. No, you certainly can't. Okay. What's locked off number 22? Six foot three, 190 pounds, 21 years of age. Watch him. Over to Boris Alexander out there. Two youngest players, and it gets by Dryden. Once again, Dryden gets a piece of it. Now, here's Ory getting turned around at center ice. The two-on-one break with Robinson electing to drop to the ice on a sliding-type defensive move. He did not make it. And the puck gets in behind Dryden. We've got a tie hockey game. Red Army goals, court by number 11. Boris Alexandrov. Assist to number 22, Victor Schluchtoff. Oh, here's a close-up look at it now in the net. Alexandrov, who got a goal against the Rangers, gets this one again. You see Dryden getting, stopping the puck, but not stopping it totally, and it's over the line. Dick, that's a young fellow we saw last year when the juniors came right. over, the Soviet juniors, and he was outstanding in Winnipeg. Sagankov and Schluchtoff. Assisting on the goal by Alexandra. The tie at three. Now the Soviets come back. Spinning around. Savard clearing it to the fleur. He's checked. Savard gives it to the point. Back to center. Off the leg. They pile off in over the Canadians line. The pass. It's Ganey going after it along the board. Now Canadian. Ganey with the mare. Lafleur on the far side. Lafleur and his pass in off the leg of Gusev. Petrov to Harlamov in over the line. And it is called offside against the Soviets. Face off. The right of Dryden Popov's shot was weak and wide. Now Mahovlich picks it up at center in over the Soviet line. Here's Mahovlich trying to fire it in front. Volchenkov in there against Mahovlich. Kuzkin takes over. Out it goes off Robinson's stick from center. And that's Don Ory back there with Malsev watching him. Cournoyer couldn't corral it on the right side. Volchenkov back into his own zone. Icing against the Canadians. And that does not sit well with this partisan Canadian crowd. Yeah, a bit of a dubious call by Karindin. Maybe a confusion on the rules. 
And the reaction of the fans in our hockey, of course, if a player has felt that he can play the puck, the icing is waved off. But it stands here, and we'll have the face-off in the Canadian zone. Soviet team, a lot of youngsters on it. They're ages 22, 23. Uh, the majority of them are certainly under 25 years of age. Volchenkov and Kuzkin, the defensemen, are in over the Canadian line. Montreal can't get out the first time. Now Mahavli just a shot. Shot coming in on that left side, trying to barge in there. Volchenkov takes over. He feeds it ahead to center. Pop off with Malsev. They're in over the line. And Popov ripped that shot off the Pauli Kuzkin. Kuzkin over on the other side to Malsev. And the pass comes away to the right side, back into the center ice area. Now there are exactly 13 minutes left in this hockey game. Canadians led a 3-1 at one stage, but it is now tied at three. There's the fellow who scored the tying goal, Alexandrov. Gets it ahead to Vikulov. Zutkov took the shot. Dryden cleared it. Some of the crowd getting on Dryden. Now Cornwallie dashes down on the right wing. Fires a shot. And it's gloved by Petschak. Yeah. Hey, honey, the directions you gave me are terrible. Split right, zoom, Split 76X. Right. 76! Okay, here's what you need to do. Take 72. 72 yeah. Yeah. There's that big wall on your right. All right, let's go! Come around the jug handle to the beat it. jug handle! Hit. Okay, love you. The Infiniti FX and new G35 sedan with intelligent all-wheel drive. A system so advanced, it automatically changes when conditions change. For all-wheel drive traction when you need it, and rear-wheel drive handling when you don't. Intelligent all-wheel drive from Infiniti. Hyundai Tucson, winner of the Ajax Best New Crossover Vehicle Award. Perfect for whatever, whenever. February on the NHL Network, NHL Classic Series, showcasing the game's greatest playoff matchups of all time. Live NCAA action featuring the best U.S. college rivalries. Top 10, a countdown of the game's best goals, penalty shots, playoff performances, and more. 20 greatest games, showcasing the finest games in NHL history. And exciting action from the East Coast Hockey League. Join us in February on the NHL Network. Slip top against Risebrow on the draw. Alexandrov is a bit fractious. Now it's back to the point. There's the shot blocked by Tretiak. Lambert waited too long. Zagankov poked it away and then played it along the board. He has difficulty getting it out the first time, and he rolled it to center. The point ahead to Lambert. He cleared it in. Risebrow with it. Here's Risebrow on the board. Risebrow working off the board. Still has the center to the inside. Zagankov sends Alexandrov away. Shluktov has to go off his stick. He and LaPointe go to the corner. Now they play along the board. Rise Brown and Alexandra started to shove each other rather meaningful. The Gangkok in his own zone. Lucinko cleared it to center. Now Canadian Lambert finally gets it. In over the line. Center again. Retiak got a stick on it. Now Rise Brown backhanded it against the stick and it goes over the net. Alexandrov, a pass taken by Vikulov. Vikulov over the line, trying to get by LaPointe, and he couldn't. Here's Tomlin. Now with 
Jarvis and Lambert. The Jarvis over to Lambert. And the pass was just behind Lambert. He was ready to move in unmolested on the left side. Now Savard ripped a high one from center. Vasiliak laying it out to the line. They pile off the flank of it down the ice. This could be icing against the Soviet. 10.57 remain in the third period. Soviets for three. Montreal Canadiens for three. This game marks the halfway point for the Army team in their trip. They will play the Boston Bruins next Thursday night. And the Philadelphia Flyers in the final game of the series a week from Sunday on the 11th. Now Lapointe has it. He's closing in for the shot. That was his shot low and wide. Armalov shoots it down the ice again. The Army team call for Icy. Now the New York Rangers continue to struggle. They are now trailing Atlanta 5-0 in the third period in New York. The Penguins lead the Los Angeles Kings 5-1 in the third period in Pittsburgh. And it's 2-0 for Detroit over Washington in the third period in Detroit. And that Atlanta Rangers game could go a long way toward determining the Rangers' playoff possibilities. They'll be behind eight points if they lose. Now Petrov. Petrov in over the line. Weak shot goes off LaPointe. Savard ahead to Lemaire with a fleur. Savard and Ganey. They shoot it in there behind the net. LaFleur right out in front. And it was called. And the crowd again did not uh, like that. That's a mistake by the Soviet official, and they are recognizing that fact by dropping the puck right at center ice. It would have been an icing call had LaFleur not touched it, but he did. The puck coming in, crossing the two lines from Lemaire. Now, Lafleur has the jump on the Soviet defenseman. He gets to the puck first, so that eliminates the icing, but the icing call was made by Karindin, the Soviet linesman. So the Canadians miss out on that chance, and they'll drop the puck at center ice. Before this series started, Peter Mahovlich in a story said it could well be decided this particular game in the last 10 minutes. We are 21 seconds away from the last 10 minutes, and Mr. Mahavich is right on with his prediction because it is a 3-3 at this moment. Saladukin at center against Jarvis. There's Jimmy Roberts trying to get possession. Now Robinson feeds it in over the Soviet's line. Saladukin against Jarvis. Volchenkov pinned in on the boards by Roberts. And they'll face off to the left of Tretiak. Well, the Canadians have had so many scoring chances, John. Uh, do you think things with 10 minutes to go on the score tide might tighten up a little bit here now? Well, they have to adapt to a defensive style to be sure, but they've played so very good, they deserve to win. Popoff rolls it to center. Robinson gets it in over the line. Jarvis tipped it. And it's Kuzkin for the Soviets. He beats it through center. That's going to be icing. And the Soviets have been called with a fair degree of regularity for icing in this third period. At TD Canada Trust, you don't have to fill out deposit or withdrawal slips. We do it for you. Which makes banking quicker and easier. Make the move to TD Canada Trust. Now with Easy Switch, it's never been easier. Every year, the groundhog repeats the same wintry ritual. Well, he's not the only one. Join the NHL Network for Groundhog Sundays. Each week, we'll turn back the clock and give you the roundup of the week that was one year ago. Let's take a look back. Groundhog Sundays, only on the NHL Network. No groundhogs were harmed in the making of this promo. 
February on the NHL Network. NHL Classic Series, showcasing the game's greatest playoff matchups of all time. Live NCAA action featuring the best U.S. college rivalries. Top 10, a countdown of the game's best goals, penalty shots, playoff performances, and more. 20 greatest games, showcasing the finest games in NHL history. And exciting action from the East Coast Hockey League. Join us in February on the NHL Network. Join the NHL Network as we present the Top 10. From great goals to stunning saves and much more. The Top 10, nightly at 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific on the NHL Network. And there you see the statistical story, 835 left, third period. Each team with three goals. Robinson being watched by Alexandrov. Uh, Vikulov is up there too. Zagankov takes it off the board, loses it to shot. Shot failed to clear it out. Shluktov, he lost it to shot. Over for Cornwallie. Here's Cornwallie. Dashing in, he shoots it. And Petsiak was right there in the line of fire. The Hobbley jammed his man Vikulov out of the play. Shluktov bringing it in over the line. He's forced back out with eight minutes left. Shluktov. Playing it back to the line, Luchenko. He shook down, being watched by Mahovlich. Mikulov played it back in, Cornwallie almost got it. Zagankov has to turn from the corner to get away from Cornwallie. Scott picks it up after Cornwallie, stopped it on a soft off shot stick. Slipped off ahead to Alexandrov. Mikulov on the other side. Alexandrov loses his balance behind the net. And Mahavli jumps from the corner. Here's Mahavli down to center. Coming down on the line, still with it. Working it to the corner. Cornwallie over the shot. He couldn't pick it up cleanly. Zagankov down on the right wing in over the Canadian's line. Mahavli picks up a loose shot at center. Here's Mahavli on the backhand. He turns, getting set for a pass. Kilo Point closing in for the shot. Had trouble with that one. Peter Mahavlis made a great play to LaPointe. LaPointe really fired this one. And here's the shot. He didn't have control of it at all. It's, but he's, he protects that rebound. Now LaPointe shooting it again. That was a hard one, and he has a quick hand, John. Oh, he certainly has, Dan. He, and he's been super tonight for the Soviet Union, and he's been the deciding factor as far as I'm concerned. The crowd urging the Canadians on as time becomes a factor. Now Popoff in over the line. Soliducan follows in against Trombley. Trombley hit Rysgrau with Lambert. Lambert chasing it to the left side, and Kuskin gets it out. Now Trombley waiting for Lambert to get on side. Volchenkov on the left wing. Trombley was going after his man instead of the puck. He had a chance to pick it up. Now Lambert rolled it out over the line. Canadians leave it there. Solidukin coming back in. Stick handling shoots it along the edge. Now the Russians in there. Here's Popov getting set. And a great defensive play by Van Box here on that pass. Lambert down in on the left side. Lambert follows in. Passed it down on his knees. And the Soviets start back. Maltz in. Ahead to pop out. Maybe a drop pass. Not coming right into the must be. The light doesn't go on. It hits the goalpost. That looked as if it had gone in, but it hit the goalpost. Well, it's 1 1 in goalpost. Wilson in the second period. And that one on a super play by pop off. Dryden was beaten cleanly, John, but the post came to the Canadians' well, rescue. He got a lucky bounce here, pop off, and got by Savard. Now watch him golf this one right off the goalpost. <laughs> Murray Wilson earlier and pop off right now and that ties it up in goalposts. Soviets, everybody up on the faceoff. Vasiliev winds up for a shot. Stopped by Ori. Picked up by Lemaire with Lefleur and Ganey. Ganey at the line. Both checked by Vasiliev. Now then Robinson. Lemaire couldn't hold it. Petrov swings back to his own line. Watched by Ganey. Vasiliev, Mikhailov, back into the corner for Kusev. Kusev turning, now to the second by Gainey, Gainey 
going in, he shoots, and a big save by Petsiak. Great opportunity for the Canadians there as they pick up that errant pass. Now Hermelov couldn't get the Kailov pass. Well, both teams have gilded-edged opportunities to get the go-ahead goal. Now in over the line, Lafleur with the mayor. The mayor shooting it, scooped away by Prestia. Petra picks up the puck again in over the line. The mayor starting out over the line. Ahead for Lafleur. It was too far. Lafleur around the net. They thought they were going to have a whistle there for the offside, but Lafleur has it, gives it to Peter Mahab. He's over from the net. He fanned on it. He was all alone in front of the net. Shot. He fanned on it. Did that hop or what, Dick? I think it did. Without to give shot a break, I think it hopped right over his stick from the Forum in Montreal. Super Series 76. Four years ago, I had no job and over 200000 in debt. I went to this website, and this year I should make over a quarter of a million. I went to this website, filled in my personal interest, and their system matched me up with the perfect opportunity. If you're considering a home-based business, this is the one website you need to visit. My goal for next year is 50000 a month. I never dreamed I'd be making 20000 a month, but I am. This wasn't one of those get-rich-quick schemes, but guess what? I did. Go to your computer and get started today. Log on to this website now. Introducing the all-new 2005 Jeep Grand Cherokee. With an available 330 horsepower Hemi V8, it has best-in-class horsepower and torque. Standard electronic stability program that helps maintain control on slippery roads. And available Quadra Drive 2, our most advanced four-wheel drive system ever. Go ahead, let it snow. The all-new Jeep Grand Cherokee Limited, 2005 4x4 of the year. February on the NHL Network, NHL Classic Series, showcasing the game's greatest playoff matchups of all time. Live NCAA action featuring the best U.S. college rivalries. Top 10, a countdown of the game's best goals, penalty shots, playoff performances, and more. 20 greatest games, showcasing the finest games in NHL history. And exciting action from the East Coast Hockey League. Join us in February on the NHL Network. 31 days of great TV will be over January 31st. Keep the great TV coming. Subscribe to any or all of your favorite channels and enjoy great movies, comedies, music, sports, documentaries, international channels, and much, much more. 31 days of great TV can be just the start of great entertainment all year round. To keep enjoying your favorite channels, call your television service provider today. 3-3. John, I can't recall a recent game in the NHL when the Canadians have had so many scoring chances. That's the one by Ganey. You know, Harry said the other night many times, if you're going to catch this team, it's going to be inside their own blue line. Well, they have been sloppy. Now the point. Keeps it in, takes the shot right on. That was screened, and Tretziak is incredible. Shots on goal to this point in the game, 36-11. Canadians, Cornwallier chasing it, back in for Shutt. Here's Shutt trying to center it. The gun cop cleared it to the line. Savard pumped it back in. Cornwallier centering it. It goes high into the air. Schluchtoff playing it to Sagankov. Up to Alexandrov. Alexandrov to Vikulov in over the line. Schluchtoff loses it. Canadian shot got clear of it without looking. And it went to a Soviet player. They could have had a three-on-two break there. Now, at the Canadiens' line, Warren Wye lost it. Here's Savard headmanning the puck to Wilson, broken up and cleared by Luchenko out over the line. And Vikulov rolled it ahead. And it's the point. In his own zone, Vikulov watching him. Wilson fired it to an open wing. Now Alexandra turning at his own line. These players have got to be mighty tired at this stage in the game. Puck is in the Canadian zone. Alexandra doing the four checking against the bird. Now Jim Roberts comes on, clears it on the left side, and Kuzkin knocked it back to center. Two minutes and 56 seconds left. Solidukin has it. He fires at the rebound. Cleared by Savard. 
And it's the point. In behind the net. Now the Soviets are doing the four seconds. They have their defense away up. They start to fall back as Roberts takes it. Gives it to Wilson. Wilson in over the Soviet line. Wilson on the board. Played it back. And it goes down to the Canadians line. Jarvis couldn't get possession. Don Orr to Robinson on the left side. Canadians have been missing with that pass quite often when a fellow teammate is steaming in on either wing. Now Robinson almost lost it. Here's Lemaire coming in with Ganey. Ganey back to Lemaire. Lemaire back to Ganey. It hopped over his stick. Ganey tried to center it against Dusat. Here's Lemaire with it. Lemaire's pass gobbled up. Mikhailov has it. He's out there with a Harmelov and Petrov. That is a big line for the Soviets. Mikhailov cleared it ahead. Robinson knocked it back. Harmelov to Vasiliev. Score tied at three. A minute and 40 seconds left. Vasiliev up on the right side. Harlamov, he has a goal tonight coming in on the right side. Petra picked it up, dropped it back. Vasiliev taking a shot. It goes off a player high, and that was called on the offside. 127 left to play. 3-3 three, three the score. John, I think the nicest thing about all of this, no matter what might happen in this last minute and 27, this game has lived up to its advanced billing right to the hill, and I think it's a tribute to both hockey clubs. Well, it certainly has, Dick, and I... It's just been great hockey by both teams. Good stick handling by both teams. Good goalkeeping by Trechak. Just been super. Mikhailov chops it in over the line. He took a high stick unintentionally. However, he is not suffering. And he's staying out there. 122 left. It's Lemaire. Lafleur and Ganey, the forward line for the Canadians, no change for the Soviets, Harlamov, Petrov, Mikhailov. Now Savard is in over the Soviet line. Savard goes to the corner, trying to center it. Here's Ganey with it. Ganey has it, he centered it right in front. Here's the Bears shooting it! And a tremendous save, another save by Tretziak. Scintillating save by Tretziak. Here's Harlamov coming in over the line. Harlamov centered it and it's swept away by Severn, who ignited that Canadian rally. Mikhailov shoots it, Dryden looked behind him, and it's cleared away by Lafleur. Dryden looked behind him on that. Now there are 34 seconds left. Harlamov goes to center. Mikhailov has it going in on the right side. And his pass is picked up by Jarvis. Here's Jarvis ahead to the point. Soviets take over. Harlema in on the right side, dropping it back. Petrov is getting set. He shoots it, and it went to the side of the net. There are now 12 seconds left. Wilson cleared it out. Sokankov over to Gusak. Jarvis has it outside his line. It looks like it's going to end at three. One second left. The game is over, and the Soviets and the Canadians tie at three. Well, John, it's just amazing. The final score is 3-3. The shots on goal, 16-6 in favor of the Canadians in the final period. 38-13 overall. I don't think we're being anything but fair to say that the Soviets were completely outplayed tonight. But we've just seen one of the greatest displays of goaltending that you could ever see. Just tremendous. I watched them yesterday in practice, worked so very hard, even the pregame warm-up tonight. And uh, he has all the moves and watches a puck. Very seldom miss a rebound, go out. Just a great hockey game, and we couldn't ask for anything better. Well, the Canadians giving Tretiak just a little bit of an extra handshake, and Cornway rubbed him on the head as they go by. It has been a fine hockey game. There was nothing untoward happened in the way of anything physical on either side. Uh, the officials did a good job. The story of the game has to be Tretiak. The nucleus of the Canadians team would go on to win four straight cups, making this performance by Tretiak even more impressive with time. As for Tretiak, he would lead the Soviets to ten world titles and three Olympic gold medals from 1970 to 1985 and become the first Soviet ever named to the Hockey Hall of Fame in 1989.
Thanks for watching this edition of the NHL Network's presentation of the 20 Greatest Games. See you again next time. NHL Classic Series, showcasing the greatest Stanley Cup playoff series ever played. The pass, socket, scores! The greatest Stanley Cup finals on Classic Series, all week on the NHL Network. This is the NHL Network. Hello, I'm Dan Moriarty, and welcome to Game 5 on the glass at the Stanley Cup Finals. Well, what a difference two games can make. The Mighty Ducks, seemingly dead in the water after Game 2, came roaring back with a pair of OT victories in Anaheim to even the series. Who would have imagined it? The Devils are back on home ice looking to regroup and regain control of the series. We take you out to New Jersey for Game 5 of the Stanley Cup Finals on the glass. And we are just about ready for the start of Game 5 of the 2003 Stanley Cup Finals. There is John Sebastian Jaguer. All he has done in this playoffs is recorded goals against of 1.32. And he has stopped nearly 96% of the shots he has faced. And he has five shutouts. Remember, this is his first time in the Stanley Cup playoffs. It's not the first time for Martin Brodeur. He's been outstanding as well, Joe. Six shutouts, tying Dominic Hasek's record from a year ago. Yeah, Marty Brodeur said yesterday, he says, you know, we always do it the hard way here in New Jersey. We take a two to nothing games lead. We go out, we're just trying to win one game. We can't do it, so now we've got to do it the hard way. Take a look at the officials working the game tonight. That is Bill McCreary wearing number seven on his back. He'll be joined by Paul Dvorsky. Brian Murphy and Tim Nowak are the linemen. And uh, Turner Stevenson not only in the lineup, he's in the starting lineup. And look for him to be a physical force if the Devils can get any kind of a four check going. Here is Rafalski sending it across. And Freeland carries into the Anaheim zone, but the play whistled offside. Now then some lineup changes That's Sergey Breland who has been playing center since the absence of Joe Neuendijk. He gets switched now to the left wing playing along with Ray Ohm and Stevenson back in there. So Pat Burns has made a few line changes as we saw him do in in game number four where he switched all the right wings. So he's trying to find some right combinations. Devils win the draw jump into the Anaheim zone. Turner Stevenson gets in there gets a skate on it. Stevens at the left point, dumps it toward the front of the net. It's blocked, and here's Paul Correa with it. Correa sends it across to the far side. Root to top of the circle. Good save made by Brodeur, and he hangs on. Anytime Anaheim goes on the road, and they've done it all season long, they move Correa back with Ruchin at center and Niedermeyer on the other side. And that was Correa that set up Ruchin for that shot. So that's a line that they play together on the road, but when they're at home, they switch it around. Correa generally plays with Oates. Both Ruchin and uh, Korea looking for their first points to those finals, as is Sakura, who tried to dump it in front. Oates did get it to the front, saved by Brodeur, as LeClaire was there with a redirection. Now, the other thing that Mike Babcock does is anytime there's an offensive zone faceoff, he puts Oates on the ice to take the draw. And Oates ended up with getting the puck to the front. Sakura entered, just dropped it off, and then it was Oates that tried to set up. LeClaire for the shot, and Brodeur was there. Another clean face up, win and score! Right off the face off, and Sakura sneaks one underneath Brodeur. As and this, how about this? The oh, first minute of the first period. Has this been the theme? How often have we talked about face offs? It's been domination and Oates against Madden, and look at this. Look at this. Clean win. 
quick shot. It looked like it might have deflected on the way in, but the shot by Sakura, his first one, Brodeur gets a piece just off the glove and in. I mean, Brodeur can hardly get set. And look at this shot. I mean, that's a clean face-off win, very similar to the overtime winner in game three. Absolutely. They have won 50 of the 80 draws the Ducks have in the first four games in the Devils zone. And the crowd reacted to Jaguar going down. Here is Ruchin on a rush. Picked up Rob Niedemeyer on the back. And a shot. A save by Brodeur. Keep in mind what the first goal has meant.